The movie begins with a view from above of a dusty village in Mosul, Afghanistan. A man runs down a road, yelling to warn the Taliban about the Americans coming. The wind carries his voice, but no one listens. In the sky, a drone watches everything. The man reaches an older Taliban member and tells him about the danger. The men quickly hide an explosive device, getting ready for the American troops. Soon, the sound of helicopter blades can be heard, and the villagers hide in their homes, trying to avoid trouble. The troops arrive and start searching the area for the enemy. The village is very quiet, but the soldiers stay alert, knowing the enemy is close. The squad leader, Pretty Boy, decides to move forward, leading his team deeper into the village. Suddenly, gunshots and an explosion break the silence. The team realizes the Taliban fighters were hiding, ready to attack. Pretty Boy tells his team to surround a man who looks like he is making a bomb. Jake, one of the soldiers, gets impatient and nervous. He thinks they are taking too long and tells the man to drop the weapon. The man gets more upset and does not follow orders. Suddenly, he pulls out a gun, and the troops have to shoot him. The gunfire echoes through the village, and the man falls to the ground, dead. The soldiers stand in silence, realizing they have just taken a life. After the tragic event, the soldiers feel tense as they wait for their commanding officer's instructions. Colonel Tom Mason's voice comes over the radio, asking about the situation. Jake tells him about the informant's death and the IED. He asks for permission to disarm it, but Mason says no, knowing it's too dangerous. Despite this, Jake decides to disarm it anyway. With careful hands, he successfully disarms the bomb and feels relieved. Suddenly, a second bomb goes off, and chaos breaks out. The Taliban fighters attack from all sides, shooting accurately. Jake gets up and runs, looking for a way out. But he can't leave his friends behind and decides to fight back. He runs towards Mason, who is hiding behind a wall. They exchange fire, trying to stop the enemy's attack. As Jake gets closer to Mason, an enemy fighter sneaks up behind him. Mason sees this and yells a warning. Jake turns and sees the enemy fighter, frozen with fear. Mason quickly takes out the enemy, saving Jake's life. Years later, Jake is a different man. He is no longer the confident soldier he once was, but an anxious civilian. He struggles with memories of the war, haunted by the ghosts of his fallen friends. To cope with his PTSD, he takes medicine to fight the nightmares that bother him every night. To live a normal life, Jake works at Earl's Auto Shop in Riverside, California, trying to find purpose after the war. However, the memories still haunt him, and he wonders if he will ever find peace again. After a long day, Jake finally comes home to his family. The warm and cozy atmosphere of their home comforts him. But their happy mood is broken when Ashton shows him a pile of bills. The weight of their financial problems hits them hard. Ashton worries about how they will make ends meet. But Jake stays confident, assuring her they will find a way, as they always do. To lighten the mood, Jake playfully takes a piece of chicken and runs away from her, making his wife laugh. But the stress of their situation stays, and Jake can't stop worrying about how they will survive in this tough world. The next day, Jake goes to work at Earl's auto shop, looking for some normalcy. However, he finds out that Earl owes money to a dangerous Mexican gang. The gang's leader, Fresh, shows up at the shop and demands his money, leading to a fight. Fresh orders his men to beat up Jake, trying to scare him into paying. But Jake is a trained soldier. He quickly takes down the gangsters. Before he can go after Fresh, Fresh pulls out a gun and threatens him. The tense standoff ends with Fresh promising to meet again, leaving Jake worried about the danger he's in. After the fight with the gang, Jake talks to Earl, worried about the trouble. Earl explains that he used to be part of that life, but was lucky to leave it and start a new life. He shows Jake his home, a sign of his success and stability, and promises to protect their neighborhood. That night, tragedy strikes. Fresh shows up at Jake's house, demanding money and revenge. Jake rushes inside to protect his family, but he finds them lying lifeless on the floor. Grief and despair take over as he falls to his knees, screaming in pain. His life is shattered, and he is left with nothing but sorrow. The police arrive, but it doesn't help Jake's pain. He has lost everything he loved, and the loss consumes him. In a panic, he gets into his car, determined to find the man responsible for his family's death. 
His search leads him to a club, where he sees Fresh's car parked outside. Without thinking, he storms into the club, gun in hand, ready for revenge. The clubgoers run in fear, but Jake only focuses on his target. He shoots down the gang members, letting out his rage and frustration. When he finally faces Fresh, he hesitates. Fresh tries to explain that he had no choice, that it was just business. But Jake's resolve is firm. With tears streaming down his face, he pulls the trigger, ending Fresh's life. Five long months have passed, and Jake has been living a nightmare. He's in prison for his violent actions, haunted by the memories of his family's death. The guilt is too much to bear, leaving him with nothing but pain and regret. One day, Mason visits him, offering to help with his case. But Jake, consumed by guilt, refuses the help, insisting that he deserves to be in prison for what he did. Mason tries to comfort him, but Jake doesn't listen. He tells Mason that he killed without remorse and would do it again if needed. He ends the conversation by telling Mason never to come back. Later that day, Jake gets an unexpected visitor, Ramsey, who runs a private task force. Jake dismisses him, thinking he's just another person trying to use him. But that night, masked men invade his cell and kidnap him. Ramsey reveals himself as the mastermind behind the kidnapping. He tells Jake that he's been watching him and is impressed with his skills. He offers Jake a choice, stay in prison or start a new life by joining his unit. After some thought, Jake decides to join, changing his life completely. Jake finds himself working for a secret government agency called Section 8 in Washington, D.C. Ramsey introduces him to the rest of the team, Elias, Ajax, Brunner, and Mueller. They brief him on their mission and what they do. Jake learns that his real identity is declared dead and that he'll get a new name and backstory. Before he can settle into his new life, the team tests his skills and willpower. Ajax provokes him into a fight, and Jake, initially reluctant, is forced to fight back. In a fit of rage, he almost stabs Ajax's eye with a pin, but a sudden memory of his family calms him down. After completing his initiation, Jake is sent on his first mission with Mueller. She briefs him about their target, Alejandro Castillo, a defense contractor and black market weapon dealer. Their job is to get a schematic file and eliminate Castillo before he can sell it to the Russians. Jake and Mueller arrive in Mexico to find Castillo. They locate him in a warehouse, where he is meeting with a Russian negotiator. Jake takes out a guard, causing chaos as both parties turn on each other. He uses the confusion to eliminate everyone in his way. Jake eventually takes down Castillo and retrieves the files, sparing the lives of two innocent women. When he returns to the base, Ramsey scolds him for leaving survivors, threatening to send him back to prison if he doesn't follow the rules. Jake is dismissed, and Mueller evaluates his performance, praising his skills. However, Ramsey wants Jake to do even better. The next day, Locke, another team member, infiltrates a hotel to eliminate a target who knows Ramsey. The man tries to bribe Locke, but he stays focused and kills him. Discovered by the guards, Locke fights his way out, using his skills to overpower them and escapes in a stolen car, leaving chaos behind. Jake has settled into a new house but struggles with memories from his time in Afghanistan. He finds an old picture that reminds him of a conversation with Mason, where he blamed himself for his commanding officer's injury. Mason had given him wise words to ease his guilt. Later, Jake meets Mueller in a pub, and they bond over drinks. He asks her about Ramsey, but she doesn't reveal anything. Instead, she shares her own story of being reprimanded for punching her commanding officer in the army. Ramsey then briefs them on their next mission, targeting a state senator named Jim Graham. Their goal is to retrieve sensitive digital information and eliminate the target. Mueller is tasked with getting the files, while Jake is on lookout duty. The rest of the team is there for backup. Ramsey warns them that security will be tight, and they should be ready for a fight. They arrive in California disguised as landscapers, but things quickly go wrong. Mueller takes down the guards in the room, but the security system is alerted, compromising their mission. With their cover blown, Jake chases after Graham while Mueller retrieves the files. Jake eventually corners Graham but hesitates when he sees that Graham has a family. Unfortunately, Ajax catches up and kills Graham without hesitation. Jake is haunted by Graham's words and struggles with memories of his wife. His hesitation in killing Graham makes him a target of Section 8. 
masked men invade his home, but Jake manages to escape. Desperate for help, Jake turns to Mason, who warns him that being a fugitive is serious trouble. Jake asks for money and a gun to escape, and Mason reluctantly agrees. Back in Riverside, Jake tries to investigate his family's murder and gets a lead from his son's friend. However, Locke intervenes and kills the boy. Jake escapes, but Locke's actions provoke Ramsey to challenge his team to find Jake. The Section 8 unit catches up with Jake at Earl's shop, where he fights fiercely against Elias and Brunner. He manages to defeat them, but Ajax is a tough opponent. Jake is almost beaten, but Mueller arrives and shoots Ajax, saving Jake's life. After the fight at Earl's shop, Earl gives Jake a car and tells him to leave before the police arrive. Jake and Mueller argue about trust while driving. He asks about Ramsey's whereabouts and decides to confront him. They go to Montana and sneak into the cabin where Ramsey is meeting with some congressmen. Jake gets knocked out, and when he wakes up, he's tied to a chair with Ramsey and Mueller beside him. Ramsey reveals that this was all a trap and they have a surprise for him. Tom Mason enters the room and Jake is confused by his sudden appearance. They reveal that they are responsible for killing his family. They saw his family as a waste of his talent. Ramsey's betrayal hurt deeply, but Tom had a plan. He slipped away to give Ramsey the ransom money while Mueller checked it. Once it was safe, Tom crept back to the room where Jake was locked up. Tom revealed that he was hired to take down Section 8 and that he was on Jake's side all along. Suddenly, a loud alarm interrupted them. Ramsey's men were closing in. The two men stood back to back, ready for the fight. Ramsey's men rushed in like a swarm of bees. The fight was intense, but Jake and Tom fought hard, using their strength and intelligence to defeat them. As they cornered Ramsey, Jake's anger grew. Ramsey tried to turn Jake against Tom, but Jake saw through his trick. Just as Mueller tried to shoot Jake, Tom shielded him, taking a fatal bullet. Ramsey escaped while Mueller captured Jake. Mueller's tough exterior cracked as she interrogated Jake. She thought she had him trapped, but Jake quickly overpowered her. He set off after Ramsey, who crashed into an oncoming car. Jake approached the wreck, and Ramsey insulted him, but Jake was done talking. He pulled the trigger. Later, Jake met with Attorney General Savoy, who offered him a new life and a fresh start. But Jake declined, saying he had nothing left to fight for. Savoy respected his decision and handed him a card. Back home, Jake faced off against Locke, determined to finish the job even without Ramsey. In a brutal fight, Locke gained the upper hand, but Jake didn't give up. He grabbed a gun and took down Locke. As the movie ended, Jake sent a voice message to Earl, thanking him for saving his life, just as his father had saved him. Earl was emotional as Jake boarded a bus. He called Savoy, who welcomed him to Section 9. The journey was far from over, but Jake was ready for whatever came next. So the moral of the story is, always check for a second bomb. Never mess with a chicken, and if life gets tough, just wait for a mysterious stranger to kidnap you into a new career.